I think for a long time, deaf people have been silenced, essentially. They've been passive, and it's now time for us to tell our story. This is a story about Laurent Clare and Thomas Gallaudet. Who brought sign language-based education to America in 1816. The process we've been through is called an R&D. In, in the States, we would call it a workshop. It's the same thing. And it means all our focus has gone into working on the text and on the performance. So you'll see also that the actors will sometimes be still on book, in other words, using their scripts. And that's on purpose. This is still a work in progress. We have this group of multi-talented artists that have been working for a little over 10 days much of which has involved translation from English to BSL, as well as the other sign language forms. You have to have a, a correct translation. And that sign language translation has to match exactly the intent of the line in English. The way you were signing just then, that was not English. I don't think a lot of people realise, you know, even with sign language itself, I mean, it has its own meaning, it has its own feeling, it has its own, you know, structure, grammar, everything. The best thing about this play was actually achieving a clear distinction between different modalities of sign language. We have BSL, British Sign Language, Sign Supported English, Visual Vernacular and Methodical Sign Language. It's not just a straight, a straight translation into sign language. Classical subject? One definition of classical is that it has stood the test of time. We would come up with a translation that we would all agree. And then when we saw it in context, it didn't make sense. So you're saying that a deaf audience seeing the sign for classical, it won't mean what we want it to mean? No. Okay. No. The challenge for this project was to really think about what was happening in this period of time with reference to sign language. Before 1900, we don't have any films of sign language. So we can take what we see in the style in the 1920s and begin to see how it evolves from what they were doing in the 19th century. It takes a lot of thought, uh, some guesswork. If I say Greek, Latin. One of them was deaf, mm. native sign. Classical sign on par? Yeah. Yes. The, the translation from page to sign was as much character work, you know, or discussions on the text itself could have been because you're looking at what the meaning of particular words are, you know, what, what does the character mean when he or she says this? I'm just worried that we're repeating the same thing twice. Go to the opposite of this, striving to be whatever this is, he wants to be the best of he, best he can. What the distinction is, is the ambition looks like it came from self-love, but it really came from self-hate. Spot on. <laughs> For his style, that's perfect. The frustration. I think it's really important to convey the emotions of Gallaudet and Claire and what they would be thinking at the time and enable your audience to connect with that. You need to show more of that, your anger, your, the things that you have internally. It's finding the subtext. I think all the work that we put into translation paid off, basically. June 19, 1816. Waves came in a mass to dash themselves against our ship and made it reel from one side to the other. This is all really quite good. I mean, how you've mastered all this in such a short time, it's, it's not normal. 
You have truly never studied English before this? I've never seen anyone learn this fast. Uh, These guys come over on the ship. Claire speaks no English, and Gallaudet knows a little bit of sign language. And he taught him sign language, and he taught him English. And, you know, Carol went and found all the original Claire writings. It's impeccable English. Sir, mighty sorry to be interrupting your teaching of the deaf and dumb fella. Mr. Clare is actually teaching me. <laughs> uh huh. I just can't believe that a story that was that far back in history is still happening now. And yeah, for me to to see to see the performances was quite. It kind of hit me in, in a place where I didn't think it would. No, no, wait, wait. You cannot punish the students for signing. This is a signing school. Who will be signing back to this young woman when she leaves I her? wish to point out. No one. I, was, I felt like I was watching what was happening to my parents. I was watching that on stage. And I feel like a lot of coders, a lot of people within the deaf community will see this piece and they'll feel the same thing. This is sort of the unofficial story of Laurent Claire and his marriage to Eliza Boardman, who is a deaf woman, and the uproar that it caused in the school back in the day. And even up into modern times, it was considered immoral for two deaf people to get married. And the fact that Laurent Claire decided to marry a deaf woman was a big point of dispute between himself and his best friend. My garden explained to me that some birds tweeting sounds like soft rain hitting your hand. Uh, other birds are, are, are silent when they fly. It is more like they are dancing than singing. But, it, but it's more than that. See, see how, how they move together. Yes. As if they were one body. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Obviously, there are many hearing plays that have some tokenistic characters added to them. This play has a deaf focus in a real positive way. You said my happiness was small-minded. Then let it be small-minded. And let Eliza and I afflict the world with more deaf people. She has taught me not to suffer from being deaf. You're looking at the politics of sign language itself. You're looking at the relationships between two different worlds and how they merge and come together. You're looking at something that's set back in a different time. But then saying that, the stuff that was present back then was still sort of present now. And so there was a lot of conversation about how far we've actually come. This special language he promotes, that's his most insidious, the powerful sign language. language. No, I've promoted it. When you set out to find an educational system for the deaf in our country, you doggedly pursued oral methods. I've changed my mind. Before oralism was established as an educational method, sign language was the method of education and deaf people progressed into professions. When that stopped, then their education deteriorated. That problem has not gone away. It still exists now. There is still this debate about whether deaf people should be taught by an oralist method or whether they should be taught by the method of sign language. I have seen a number of plays over the years where the deaf voice is very much spoken by someone else, not directly from deaf people. So it's finally, I feel like my story is being told. So thank you for that. From the right point, yes, I'm <laughs> delighted. It, it touches my heart. Um, I just wanted to say, um, so I'm hearing 
but um, a sign language user, so I'm a child of deaf adults. And, and what I found really, really beautiful about this play was like just the amount of humanity in it. And um, particularly, because I've never really got why people would have a problem with their kids signing. But then just having that um, Dr. Hudson saying, I want my son to be like me. I was like, of course, like it sounds like, like those little lines you know, turn somebody from being a monster to like, uh, and like it's, I, you know, I'm in my mid thirties. It never even occurred to me that that might, it might just be something as simple as that. And I think that's a really beautiful part about this play is that just the levels of humanity and understanding you give these characters, even though what they, what they're trying to instill is something that's really damaging. I think it's so important for the uh, British deaf community to know about Thomas Galladay and to know how you know things have evolved and how you know we need to be aware of this British deaf people. I'm a 41 year old woman. I did not know about this until tonight. I think this project is great, and I really hope there's a future for it. And there is a full production so everyone can see it, and I can tell everyone, watch this. This is your history. This is where sign language came from. It's very important to me. You know, I had a dream last night. I didn't understand it then. But I do now. We were teaching in a university. You and I were teaching native sign, which was offered in the curriculum as a classical subject. Classical subject? One definition of classical is that it has stood the test of time.